Ladies, Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen. We give you. It's the Cooper and Anthony Show. It is time to play real or fake headlines. We haven't done this in a while, have we? <laughs> do we do this all the time and I've forgotten? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did it yesterday. You just forgot. <laughs> did we do it yesterday? <laughs> I don't think so, but no. Okay. okay. We'll, we'll it's, say it's a been, week. Okay. It's been, well, no, weeks, a week's still too soon. <laughs> <laughs> two weeks. We'll say two weeks. Oh, damn. All right. Well, screw it. We're doing it no. again. No. Okay. I- do it again. <laughs> I didn't like that last one. Erase that last one. That one sucked. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to do it right this time. Um, okay, so I've got 12 headlines for you. Some of them are real. Some of them are fake. I'm going to tell you the headline, and you tell me, am I making it up, or was it a real headline? Very simple game. Got mm-hmm. it? Okay, first headline. A guy in Detroit sold weed out of a vending machine. Oh, that's true. Do you say it's true because you know the story, or you're just guessing? Well, I'm guessing. I mean, if if you have a vending machine, it's pretty easy to put weed in there. Yeah, I know, but I could still I can make up a a good headline that sounds real. No, I'm I'm saying a guy in Detroit put weed in a machine, and if you got Doritos, you also got a bag of weed. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. Uh, it was this year. It was on January seventh. Officials with the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms and Explosive they got an anonymous tip. That a guy named Marcellus Cornwall was operating a vending machine on the side of his house to sell <laughs> marijuana and pills. See, what happens is when you're a drug dealer, you know, you got to answer your phone. You got to be mm. available. This way, you put a vending machine. They just come by, buy what they want. They leave you the hell alone. You know, what gave it away, though, is the cookies were 75 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> not 75 cents so that was a, a giveaway right there that's a that giveaway yeah, y- yeah you get pot okay headline number two an alligator broke into a garage and started chugging diet coke no alligators don't have thumbs right right that doesn't make sense mm-hmm. except this one's real no how did he open the can well first before i explain how he opened the can what state do you think this happened in? It had to be Florida because <laughs> no other states have alligators. <laughs> well, I think other states do, like Louisiana. But anyway, so this did happen in Florida. An alligator broke into a Florida family's garage. Mm-hmm. And they the thing, basically, it did it with its neck. It broke open the Diet Cokes. According to Newsweek, Newsweek pub- published the story. Uh, Laren and Jamie Dobson, they were at home. They heard a crazy crash in their garage. They opened the door. There was an alligator there who was just basically busting open cans of Diet Coke and made quite a mess of their garage. <laughs> was it Coke Zero or was it Diet Coke? <laughs> we, we have to know. No, thank God it was Diet Coke and not Coke Zero. Oh, okay. Yeah, he can have all the Diet Coke he wants then. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Unless it's the vanilla flavored ones because I can't find those anymore. Oh, that would be that would that would suck though. The alligator drank the last of your vanilla <laughs> diet cokes. It's like, damn it. <laughs> okay, number three. A couple is being fined one hundred dollars per day for having hundreds of discarded mattresses in their backyard. Hundreds? I don't think they're gonna have hundreds. Maybe tens. Okay, so you're saying this one's fake. Yeah, that's a lot of mattresses. Where do you, A, where do you get all of those mattresses? Why do you have all those mattresses? Mm-hmm. And that's a lot of mattresses. Maybe the guy works for 1-800-MATTRESS, and every time they, remember, they bring a mattress, they take a mattress. Mm. And where, where do they take them? Maybe this guy's backyard. Maybe they have a sex club, and they use the mattresses back there. You don't know. Or they jump around on them like a tramp. It's a cheap trampoline. True. So, no, I say it's fake. It is fake. Oh, it is okay. Fake. Good. good job. Yeah, yeah. Um, here's another one. An Amber Heard impersonator. <laughs> an Amber Heard impersonator. This is my favorite part. Says business has dropped off dramatically this past month. <laughs> what does she do? A, <laughs> do, you, do you go to birthday parties? <laughs> do you jump out of cakes? I don't know what you do as an Amber Heard well, impersonator. I think, do, I think you do know what they do. And I think it involves a mattress. Uh, uh, <laughs> that, that's the only thing you... you <laughs> no, I can't come over until after 10 weekday mornings. 
<laughs> I gotta have coffee. It's gotta, gotta coffee be around first. ten o'clock. I need a little bran flakes. I yeah, need you. At, I, can... I need you at eight. No, it, it, <laughs> no, it, no, I can't wake up that early. <laughs> <laughs> So is this a real headline or a fake headline? That's fake because <laughs> nobody's asking for an Amber Heard <laughs> impersonator. That's true. What would you be doing in the first place? That's right. right. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, Michael Jackson impersonator, at least you sing and dance. Johnny yeah, you're Depp. Right. I mean, uh-huh. people dress up as, as the, the pirate, the pirate right. guy. So, mm-hmm. But no, nobody's hiring her. That's right. It's it's a fake headline. Mm -hmm. It's a fake one. Okay. Uh, Headline number five. Two people were hospitalized after a fight over donuts. Oh, yeah. That happens all the time. They jump in line or something. Yeah. yeah. I, I say that's true. You say this one is true. Right. You should know this one because this happened in Spartanburg, South Carolina. <laughs> it's I right told near you, where you. It's a crispy. Where you live. <laughs> it, it told you it was a Krispy Kreme. Uh, it, That's right. That's right. It was. Told you. Two people were taken to the hospital mm-hmm. in Spartanburg after mm-hmm. a fight broke out at a Krispy Kreme. Store employees mm-hmm. told WHNS one mm-hmm. of the victims is still in the ICU while the other has been released. The Krispy Kreme in Spartanburg is like a tourist attraction it's so big <laughs> and you get to watch the donuts come off the conveyor belt mm-hmm. and go underneath the the, the sugar goodness mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. yeah it's always packed and there's always a fight right okay well there you go and somebody ended up in the icu as a result mm-hmm. all right next one uh someone peed in the water on the pirates of the caribbean ride no because how do you get in the water i don't believe that mm. This one's true. This happened. In, this happened in Disney World, again, Florida. Someone pulled down their pants and peed in the water on the Pirates of the Caribbean while the ride had been shut down and people were trapped on it, waiting to be evacuated. And this woman, I guess, had to evacuate her bladder. It was a woman. When I first heard this, I'm like, yeah, some guy took out his dick and he peed over the side, like mm-hmm. gross. But you know, guys, especially drunk ones, do that. No, it was a woman. She pulled down her pants and peed over the side of the Pirates of the Caribbean boat while all these people filmed it. You can find this one on TikTok. (laughs) Well, that makes sense because a guy can hold it, I think, longer than women. Once women have to go pee, that's it. They Mm got to pee. Yeah, it's all we think about. Yeah, Yeah. you got to pee right then. A guy will say, I can wait another hour. Women, no, can't, can't wait. Yeah, yeah. All right, next headline. A florist donated flowers to a funeral for a hairdresser's chair. Hey, that doesn't make any sense, so no. Well, hang on. You and I have friends who are hairdressers. They get these big, expensive chairs, Mm -hmm. and once they break, especially if it's a chair you've had your whole career, you know, it's almost like doing a funeral for a goldfish. Yeah, but there's chairs that are still around from the 1800s, so I think you can fix them. Okay, you're Maybe. right. This one's the, this one's yeah. a fake one. That's a yeah. fake story. Okay. All right, here's the next one. Uh, this is headline number eight. A supply chain problem might soon cause a shortage of Viagra. No. That's horrible. But is it true? <sighs> Let's hope that's true. You want it to be true? Yeah, why not? Okay, it isn't. It isn't true? Okay. No, you'll you'll get your Viagra. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I've never even seen it. Don't start that rumor. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, headline number nine. A town in Kansas drafted a resolution blaming their poor corn harvest on Satan and satanic forces. No, that's false. I... They don't believe in Satan in Kansas. They believe in <laughs> Satan in the South, but not Kansas. <laughs> Kansas kind of is the South, but okay. It's the Midwest. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, that, that is untrue. Yeah. That is untrue. Okay. Uh, number 10. A guy thought he saw someone shoplifting, so he shot him. <laughs> <laughs> True. Because they weren't wearing a mask either, and he just got upset. No, people are crazy. 
Yeah, this is true. You're right. This happened Mm -hmm. in Gig Harbor, Washington. A 70-year-old man was charged after he allegedly shot another man he believed was shoplifting at a grocery store. A bullet grazed Yeah, a bullet grazed the victim's neck. He was taken to a local hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. He was treated and released later that night. No, just let it go. You didn't see it. <laughs> you don't own the store. Let it's it none go. None of your business. Exactly. None He's of your business. He's seventy Keep years it. old. I can. Yeah. I know what this guy looks like. He yeah. looks like my next door neighbor. Right. Right. You're right about that. In Gig Harbor. Hmm. Uh, we had two left. Here's the last two. A woman is going viral on TikTok for having the world's worst date. Oh, that's every other TikTok. <laughs> 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 I think that's every TikTok you follow, so I'm going to say true. Yeah, so that should be true, because it feels like it's always on TikTok, but that's a fake headline. Hmm. I bet it's true somewhere. Yeah, that's probably true somewhere, but in this, in, in our world, it isn't true. Oh, okay. uh, and here's the last one. A sheriff volunteer was arrested for selling drugs out of his patrol car. Oh, please let that be true. <laughs> but that's going to be false because nobody, I don't care how hard up for drugs you are. Nobody's buying drugs off a cop. No matter. I don't care who they are. This story is true. No, it is not. And I'm going to let you guess again what state we're talking it, about. It doesn't matter if it's Florida or not. You're not <laughs> buying. You're like, look, you have lights on your car. You're going to buy. No, this is not legit. It did happen. It happened in Lake Wales, Florida. Yes. A sheriff's office volunteer caused accused of, sorry, a sheriff's office volunteer accused of selling Oxy from his patrol car. The guy was 69 years old. He made an additional $900 a month selling drugs out of his patrol car. See, you don't pay cops enough. That's the problem. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> well this guy's a volunteer so he wasn't getting paid he's a anything. volunteer well, cop yeah he's a volunteer cop oh uh, that, that doesn't make any sense <laughs> yeah. and those are your real versus fake headlines hey i'm will and i'm cat oh that was loud sorry <laughs> if you love 1980s pop culture you'll love 1980s now Each week, we discuss our favorite 1980s media. Like movies, TV shows, music. Yeah, we chat with our favorite 1980s celebrities. Let's see, we got a lot of those. Uh, And sometimes it's more meaningful, like affirmations with Dee Wallace. And other times, uh, Alex Winter tells us what Bill and Ted's phone booth smells like. Smelly. But it's always fun. And sometimes there's a surprise game, like right now, because once again, it's time to play... When you think of garbage, think of (laughs) Akeem. No, I'm kidding. Uh, oh, stop. darn. I thought you had some. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to miss the 1980s. You can have your 1980s now. Because that's the name of the show. Did it, you think people got that part? Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I stumbled into a land of freaks. It's the Cooper and Anthony show. I actually have a study for you. Real? You have a study? I I have a study for you. See how I turn that around and, and you go, what? A study? And when I first saw this study, I, I said, I hope it comes out zero. Well, what's the study? And then I can tell you if zero is the right number or not. The right number of friends to have, according to psychologists. Oh, interesting. And you, well, for you, it already is zero. <laughs> so that's the right number for you. Yeah. When I saw that, I said, God, I hope it's zero. But according to this, it's it's not. So what do you think the right amount of friends that you should have? Now, how are they defining friends? Like people that you know well, people that you confide in, people you hang out with? Connections that you should, okay. like relationships that you should maintain, people that you know. So let's say you have, I don't know, 10,000 people on Facebook Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But how many should you really have? Okay. So I think you need to have one friend you confide in about everything. Mm-hmm. I think you have one friend that you have fun with. I think you have um, the friend that you go to who is like kn- knows all, like the real smarty pants, the person who's been married a couple of times or like knows more than you do. And then I think you have to have one friend that you feel superior to. So... <laughs> <laughs> So that you don't, yeah, so that you just feel like, you know, if you're feeling insecure, you call that person. 
Um, and then you have to have one friend that you just laugh with. That's the only thing you guys do when you're together. You get you get together, you laugh, you have a good time. That's all there is. So five. So you say five. That's pretty good. This study says six. Does it define specifically what each friend is supposed to represent or it just says six, move on? A study indicated that six or more friends can improve your health. For your health, you should have six. But psychologist Robin Dunbar responsible mm-hmm. for the dune bar number said not the ma- a real name yeah <laughs> <laughs> well she made it up the maximum number of connections a person should be able to maintain is 150 what but of no. those 150 relationships only five are typically close friends that is the dumbest study in the world because what that <laughs> says is Screw your family, screw work, screw all the th- all the priorities you have. You should focus on trying to maintain some sort of connection with 150 people. That would be your full-time job. Nobody can do that. That's stupid. Well, I mean, if you look at Facebook or Instagram, you have a lot more than that. So if you uh, count hang on. that. How, uh, how many of those people on Facebook and Instagram do you actually interact with? For me, it's like 10, maybe. Yeah, if that. I mean, I have thousands of people that follow me on various social media sites, but I would say there's only like 10 on each site that I interact with on a regular basis. So that's like Instagram, Twitter, and let's say Facebook. I'm never on Facebook. Let's just say Facebook. So there's only 30 people right there. So I say if 40 people tell you happy birthday, I think that's a, that those are decent friends. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I, mean, I only Facebook say happy birthday re- to people I, I know and I'm close with. Yeah, but Facebook reminds you. It's almost like when you're a kid and your parent takes you to someone's birthday party. It's like, go say happy birthday to Tommy. Mm-hmm. It's like, I wasn't going to wish him a happy birthday, but you drove me over here. You put a gift in my hand and now suddenly I'm celebrating some kid's birthday. I don't even know. Yeah, so on Facebook, well, Facebook reminds me it's it's my mom's birthday, so... Thank God for Facebook. (laughs) Shouldn't have to. (laughs) But I'm just saying, like, you know, Facebook is kind of like, you know, your parent when you're four. I I don't like it. Mm -hmm. And this person said, I feel like having a dog counts as 1.5 friends. Right. They're right. I was about to ask, like, doesn't a pet count for a couple of friends right there? I mean, (laughs) I looked over to Marigold, by the way, and she's licking herself. And she is a better friend than three of your friends put together. I was about to say something about her, but there she is going to town on herself. <laughs> about to say something. Look at her go. She's really into it. I was about to say something nice about her, but there she is, like completely being a dog right now. Um, what I was going to say about her was she really is like my best friend. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, we spend every day together. You know, we're together all the time. We take long walks together. We confide in each other. You know, mm-hmm. she doesn't talk the same way, but she gives me looks. I know what she's thinking. Like, she looks at other dogs or other people and is like, check out that bitch. Like, I know what she's thinking. You, you know what I mean? feed like, her. You love on her. It's, right. You do a lot more with that dog probably in a week than you do with most friends in a year. One of my, remember my friend, Dr. Robbie, who comes on the show all the time? Right. Who hasn't been on the show in a while because I, I don't even talk to her anymore. R- Robbie has kids. She's busy with her life. You know, we, we always say that we should get together and we text or I speak to her on Instagram or we try to make a plan. But I spend more time with Marigold. I'm closer with Marigold than I am with Dr. Robbie these days. Mm. I got a booster shot today. Marigold came with me to make sure I, I was okay. <laughs> what? You got the uh, second, what do you call it? COVID booster. Oh, you got another COVID booster? Yeah. Oh, I didn't think it was time for that yet. Well, for me it is because I got mine really early. I, I did everything too early because here's the thing. I didn't go by my age. I knew so I knew a guy. Right. So when the when the shots first came out, I knew a guy who got me in to get a shot with all the old people. Mm-hmm. So I'm already ahead of everybody my age getting stuff done. Because I started out early. But I got one like a month before you. The, the booster? No, the first shot and then all three boosters. Well, yeah, that's what I mean. Like you also got in early. You, right. you got your shot with all the old, old people. Oh, wow. So 
did you feel anything? Do you feel bad now? No, uh-uh. no, I never do. No, I've I've never, I have never had a reaction to any of the shots to the point where I still to this day wonder if it was a placebo. Hmm. Did they write it on your card? They had to give me a new card. Yeah, because, they're running out of space. <laughs> I know they're they're running out of space, and the idiot that did my first one, they put this big giant sticker across two different things. So anything that could have been written on there, there's no room. Well, they didn't think you would have four. I mean, they they only had three spots on the card to begin with. Yeah, I think they assumed it was going to be over by then. Like first shot, second shot, booster, done. Mm-hmm. So is this a full dose or is it part of a dose? I don't know. What is the booster? Is it part yeah, of a dose know. or is it a full dose? What? What? Are, I don't know. Google that. What is the booster <laughs> supposed to be? <laughs> I don't know. I'm thinking it's a full dose. I would think it would be. Wow. Yeah, Although I don't know booster, anybody that has four. Booster and... Pl- oh, everybody in New York does. Oh, okay. I'm actually late on my booster. In fact, most of my friends were like, you didn't get your second booster yet? Oh, fuck you. Wow. So I guess it's time. Well, only because the numbers are going up again in New York. So now the pressure is on to get boosted again. Mm. Yeah, I got to get that then. Mm. Yeah, somebody at work was coughing today and I'm like, oh, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> I'm so done with this. I know. With people, just people around me. You know, right. I, I was driving to work yesterday and there's a guy driving in the right lane on the highway and his car is blowing so much smoke out of the tailpipe. Mm-hmm. So just smoke everywhere. He's driving down the highway. He's on the phone texting while this car is spraying crap all over the place. And I'm looking at him going... That's a virus. Right. How can aliens not look at us and think that we're viruses? (laughs) (laughs) I mean, that's he's not a human being. He's a virus. Maybe that's why they don't come here anymore. That's why there's no more sightings, because they got here and went, ooh, no, no, no. We're going to go find somewhere else to go. Yeah, It's like when you look down and you see a bunch of ants, and they're doing ant things, and you go, eh, I could step on all of them and kill them and not phase me at all. It's probably what they think. So this was interesting today. So I I had to stop by my doctor's office to pick something up before my booster. Mm -hmm. Nobody in my doctor's office is wearing a mask anymore. In a doctor's office, no mask. Yeah, they're done. People are done with that. Yeah, it's so crazy. So So the doctor's office, no one's wearing a mask. Yet on Broadway, you still have to show a vaccination and you have to wear a mask. And this week... One of the big Broadway stars threw a shit fit. This video went viral in New York. I don't think anybody outside New York really cares about it. But she went berserk because there was somebody in the audience who had their mask down just over their mouth, not covering their nose. It's not like they had their mask off. Mm -hmm. They just had their mask down. Everybody who was in the room had been vaccinated. You had to show a vaccination card. And she flipped out on this poor guy who had his mask down just below his nose in a theater. It's like, bitch, my doctor doesn't even wear a mask anymore. Yeah, it's not a poor guy. It's still stupid. If you wear your mask like that, you're a moron and you should be called out. If you're somewhere where you have to wear a mask and you're not wearing it correctly, you're just a dumbass. Well, that's what it is. It was somewhere where you have to wear a mask. And every once in a while, I go somewhere where masks are required. Hmm. And then I'll go to the, I'll go to a place that's similar where masks are optional. And it's like, none of this makes any sense <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> is, there, is there something on the door that says you have to wear a mask? And then you walk in and nobody's wearing a mask. Well, no, if there's something, if there's something on the door that says you have to have a mask on, everybody inside has a mask on. Oh, okay. But there's just very few places that, have that on the door anymore but it, like i'm saying it doesn't make any sense because there's some restaurants you go to no one's wearing a mask and others everybody is hmm. you should find out before you go <laughs> they should have like a little m on their facebook page mm-hmm. oh you're right like yeah you know, like they have a little v for vegetarian or vegan mm-hmm. you know so you know you can get a vegan meal am i getting a mask meal right is it an m or an 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 n n m non i need I need M V G F. (laughs) Mask, (laughs) vegan, gluten free. She knows everything about everyone. That's why her hair is so big. It's full of secrets. The Cooper and Anthony Show. So 
even though you always talk about not really having any friends, you kind of you kind of do. Like you understand the bro codes, right? I, I think I do. I hope I do. Well, you had a bunch of boys you hung out with back in the day. You had a crew, right? Right. All right. So the bro code standards are like they've kind of changed a little bit because of social media and the time we're living in now. So. Do you think these are proper bro code standards? Mm-hmm. I'm going to give you the what's what's up for grabs now. You tell me a yes or a no, okay? Never like a picture of your friend's wife or girlfriend if your friend is not in the picture and she is by herself, especially if she's hot. No, it doesn't matter. I think it's weird. Like if I post a picture of myself and I mean I wouldn't be in a bikini anymore but uh, let's just say I was in a bikini <laughs> nobody's gonna like it <laughs> so you're not gonna worry about that <laughs> nobody's gonna hit like nobody's gonna hit retweet <laughs> you might even get banned <laughs> from <Twitter. laughs> Elon Musk might ban you <laughs> or if I did it on Instagram, they'd be like, you're not allowed to bring those whales out of the water. The whales stay in the water. No. Well, so let's say there's a picture of me by myself looking kind of hot. Mm-hmm. And one of my boyfriend's friends likes the picture. And it's a friend I don't know very well. See, we have common friends. So that's that would be, I'd be mad if like our common friends didn't like my pictures. But if a friend that's like his friend that I don't know very well. Mm-hmm. Like, he and I threw a party once when we first started dating, and he has this friend, Craig. Oh, I shouldn't say his name, but I just did. Okay, <laughs> so he has this friend. We'll call him Craig. Okay. Um, who got very, very drunk at the party and was hitting on me. Like, I had just started dating Joe, so I think he wasn't convinced that I was on board with Joe, and he was sort of like, he even said, he's like, I know that you and Joe just started dating, but- I'm you know, very if it hammered. Work, <laughs> <laughs> right. He was very wasted. And he was, I mean, he was full on hitting on me. And it was no joke. Like, to the point where he had to apologize afterwards to me and to Joe. Like, that's how creepy and weird and insane it was. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I've sort of like kept my distance from him all these years as a result. But if he liked a picture of me where I was looking super hot, I, that would creep me. That's that's a that's an unbro thing to do. I think. No, I I think liking is fine. Commenting, like, yeah, I'd hit that. That's wrong. So just right. a like, I think that's fine. All right, so you're hanging out with your bros, and you guys are at some bar or whatever, and you know how like you and your friends get together and like you make fun of each other and say shit about each other. Mm-hmm. But if there's a if there's a chick there that your dude is interested in. And they're kind of like flirting a little. Should you stop giving your friend shit in front of the girl he's interested in? Oh, no, you never stop. You just keep on going. You got to one up each other. No, Even you, in front of the girl? Yeah, why not? She's got to know that you, you're, you can play with your friends. Yeah, I think I'm with you on this one because this particular bro code says that you should never tear your friend down in front of women. But... I, that's so stupid. Like, women aren't precious. Like, we understand that that's how guys are when they're together. And if you say something crappy about your friend, I'm, I'm not going to be like, oh, that's it. I'm not having sex with him. Mm-hmm. Trust me. I decided in the first two seconds if I was having <laughs> sex with you or not. What you say after that is irrelevant. Yeah, you don't care what their friend says. You care about how they act around you and what they look like in a pair of jeans. Right, right. Uh, this is a new bro code. Piss a urinal away, sit a seat away. You, you, you pee where you want to. It's okay to pee in the urinal right next to your bro? Yeah. I'd rather pee right next to my bro than pee next to somebody I don't know. I think it's better to pee next to somebody you don't know. I don't know. If somebody like takes a look. Mm-hmm. I think it's weird to pee in front of your friends. No, my friend isn't going to take a look. Somebody else might take a look. So I'd rather pee next to my friend. Okay. How about this? Don't get drunk and start a fight and expect your boys to bail you out. No, they have to. It's a rule. You that's better. That's what I thought. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought like if if one dude starts a fight, you know that all of his friends are jumping in. The new bro code is, no, if you're drunk and you can't back up your mouth, sorry, not my problem. You can't let yeah, your friend I, fight by himself. 
Yeah, but then I guess people are sort of like, you know, you don't know how bad the fight's going to get and you shouldn't really get involved. If anything, you should stop your friend from fighting and not not only not not get involved, but don't encourage it. No, your friend's always going to have your back no matter what. That's why you hang out with them. That's why they're your friend. Okay, here's another one. If your friend has a daughter and she's a teen or older, <laughs> minimal eye contact. <laughs> like when you go to the house... Don't make eye contact with her. If you can avoid it, don't touch her. If there's any sign of flirting, the friendship is over immediately. Oh, 100%. But (laughs) I laugh because one of my really good friends, his daughter is graduating college. Mm -hmm. So he had her really young. (laughs) So for half a second, I thought about commenting on it, saying, I'd hit that. (laughs) Oh, God. Wow. <laughs> but I didn't uh, because that would just be wrong. But in the back right. of my head, I thought I should comment because I, the things that Why? we've been through together. Yeah, right. I mean, that's that's so tame compared right. to the things that we've done in the past. Like you jokingly hitting on his daughter is nothing compared to what you guys have been through. Yeah, if I hit on her when she's 15, that's wrong. But now that she's 22... Yeah, still wrong, but funny. Still very wrong, but the things that him and I did when we mm. were 22, it's it's game on. Got it, got it. Okay, that's good. Um, how about this? If your wife or your girlfriend is around your friends, don't fight with her in front of them. Oh, no, you have to. If you did that, you couldn't you don't you, have to. No, if you did that, you couldn't hang out with anybody. That's the hardest thing because <laughs> Joe and I once had no, seriously, like Joe and I were going out with a bunch of people and we had a fight right before we were going out. And we were like, there's no way we can sit there and pretend we're not mad at each other. So he's like, tell them I'm sick. So he just stayed home. Yeah, I've never seen two people talk to each other like you do. <laughs> and it doesn't stop when you're around friends it just c- continues so you I couldn't know, hang out with mm. anybody fun fact for my friends if i ever tell you that joe's home with a stomach flu or food poisoning we had a fight he just didn't want to come out <laughs> <laughs> and that happens pretty much three times a week this is interesting if you're cheating on your girlfriend or wife Keep it to yourself, because if the person you're cheating on becomes a friend of your bro and she's cool, your friend can throw you under the bus. No, my friend cannot throw me under the bus because I would actually physically throw him under a bus. Under a bus. (laughs) (laughs) No, that's a code you don't break. Bros before hoes. Oh, 100%. Okay. Oh, yeah, they know all. All right, how about this? If your bro's getting fat, tell him he's getting fat and looking like crap. Men can handle it. And if he's been a big guy his whole life, nothing you say is going to matter. No, I can't. I can't have friends do that. You don't want a friend being like, dude, what's... Now, I'll tell you if you you lost a bunch of weight and you look sickly, I'll tell you that. I'm not going to tell you, dude, jog. Stop driving, right. run, eat a salad for an entree instead of before an before entree. Before an entree, yeah. yeah. Which you've told me a million times, so clearly you've no problem <laughs> commenting on weight. Uh, and he- here's the last one. If you get too wasted on a night out, even if it's your own bachelor party, your bro has to be your sober friend and make sure you don't do anything stupid. But if you do something stupid, he's got to tell you everything the next day. No, my bro better get wasted with me. <laughs> not doing this by myself right <laughs> no i want i want the hangover where all four of us have no idea what's going on what happened you right, have to empty right. your pockets to find out what happened the night before <laughs> <laughs> empty your pockets <laughs> empty your pockets because i don't remember anything what else you got? Yeah! it's the cooper and anthony show I feel like dating rules change as you get older. Like, the dating rules I had when I was in high school 
are different than the dating rules I had in my 20s. You get to, I guess it also depends how hot you are. Like if you're super hot your whole life, you can have all the dating rules. You can have a list of a hundred things if you're super hot. And any guy that wants to be with you like has to do all a hundred things. Yeah. You're just lucky somebody asked you out. Yeah. So I don't think age has anything to do with it now that I think about it. Cause it's the same thing in high school as now. I was just happy somebody was interested in me. People are still asking Christy Brinkley out. Right. Even though she's in her 60s, she still gets tons and tons of dates. So it doesn't matter how old you are. It matters how hot you are. Yeah. And that's what it seems like. Because the hotter you are, the more rules you can have. So some really hot girl went on TikTok and she put all these rules out there that she has for boyfriends. And the funny thing is, a lot of guys were like, uh-huh, yeah, mm -hmm, that makes sense. <laughs> I'm like, I could not get away with even one of these. Not one. Okay, so here's her rules. Mm. Number one, block anyone you had a romantic interaction with. Block. Not just don't interact. Block them. So any girl that your guy dated before dating you, block her. No, because they lost. You won. It doesn't matter if used to date is the key word there. So they're not dating them anymore. So, mm. no, it shouldn't be a big deal. To block them. Why would I block, have to block an ex when if I wanted to be with that ex, I would still be with that ex? Well, maybe it was the ex who broke up with you. No, that doesn't happen. Interesting, because she's like, you know, people you've slept with, definite no-no. Even if you've held a bitch's hand and you're still following her, you're done. Mm, okay, this chick can, better be can, hot. Yeah, I was going to say, she's very, very beautiful. But can you okay. imagine being that hot that you can have that rule? Like, I understand don't talk to an ex because why? Why would you talk to them? Mm -hmm. But to block them, that's so aggressive. Like, blocking somebody, thats I think that's a really aggressive thing to do. Hmm. Number two on her list, no following new women since the day we start dating, <laughs> period. I don't want to give an explanation, she says. So I can't follow anybody that I met at work or in real life. I can't do it. I mean, unless it's like your mother's friend or some hideous old lady that you'll never be interested in. Like, that's what she's saying. Like... You do, do not follow a new woman. Once we start dating, the followers you have, hang on tight because that's all you get. Unless they look like Shrek. If they look like Shrek, I don't think yeah. she has a problem with it. But if they're hot, then she's going to have a problem with it. But that's dumb because guys date not hot women all the time. That's the pro Hot women think that only hot women are a problem. Take it from me. Take it from a troll. I've gotten some pretty hot men out from under some pretty hot women and they didn't see it coming because there's no way they would have been jealous of me. Do you know what I mean? Like they look at me and be like, not a problem. It's like, uh, no, I will do that with your man. Uh, number three on her list, no searching girls' names in the handlebar. Like, what are you searching for? No, really, like, what are you searching for? You should find it all in me. <laughs> <laughs> so now I can't even search somebody. The problem is this is the kind of woman that doesn't like her guy looking at porn. You know, and porn is the most natural thing for guys like mm. and women too. like porn's the most natural thing for people to do that are into it. Like this is one of these women who's so insecure. Well, I watch all those 90 day fiance things on Discovery. And of course you do. Th there's one girl that when she goes out with this guy, she doesn't even want you talking to the waitress. If you, if you give the waitress more than 20%, if you give the waitress 21%, then you're hitting on her. Then you have, right, then you then you got to fight on your hands. Yes. So if you even talk to the waitress, then you're cheating on her. Right. Okay. And th this is a stupid hot chick. Right. With And she's with an ogre. But that's the thing. It just, I think this just belies your own insecurity. Like, you should be so secure in yourself that if your guy talks to, to another woman, hmm. you should be like, but he's coming home to me. Like, she's nothing compared to me. Like, men like confidence, you know, and, and women like, people like confidence. I have dated hideous Shrek-like guys. Ogres. Because they were just, I mean, ogres 
who were stupid confident and just really almost like arrogant. I remember I dated this one guy that when I brought him home to meet my friends, they were like, have you had a stroke? I said, just talk to him. Just get to know him. And they talked to him and they were like, oh, okay, we get it. Like when you first look at him, they were like, what the hell? But then they started talking to him and they were like, oh, okay, this guy has like more confidence than George Clooney. Like this is. They took I, your glasses it. off. They cleaned them really well, and then put them back <laughs> on your face. <laughs> said, "Look anyone again." Hear, anyone hear the saddest thing about the story? This guy that I was like, I'm too good for him, but I dated him anyway, and my friends were like, "What the hell's wrong with you?" He dumped me. <laughs> of course he did. It's yeah. a man's world. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It really is. It really is. Plus, he had you know he had money. He was one of those guys that had a lot of money. So. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, right. Okay, number four on her list, no liking girls' photos. Every guy knows girls don't like this. Do not like a girl's photo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if she's looking that deep in my Instagram, then we have a problem anyway. Well, I got to tell you that I'm secure with my boyfriend. I know he's not going anywhere, but once in a while, I will, I won't go to his Instagram, but you know how like on Instagram you could see what the other person liked, you could see that whole list of like what they liked and who they're following and that kind of thing. I don't know if they have that anymore, but I when they used to have that, or mm-hmm. when I used to look at that, I would see some girls on there that my boyfriend liked their photo. I'm like, who the fuck is this bitch? Yeah, I'm telling you, when guys like a photo, there's only two reasons. One, he wants to bang them, and two, he wants to bang them. Right. That's it. I know. It's the only reason. And it's awkward. It's so awkward because it's not like he's got a chance with any of these girls. But it's still like he's out there like liking or making little comments. It's just, ah, it just feels awkward. Mm -hmm. So I just, I stopped looking. But he's getting noticed by them. That's why he's doing it. If he likes enough photos, they're going to notice. Right. And then they're going to think, He's a player or he broke up with you and he's free. Right. Number five on her list, no story replying. We all know what story replies mean. We don't have to talk about it. She's right. I- I'll post a story. It's like, you know what? Just you can do like a little, I don't know, give me an emoji, but mm-hmm. you don't need to actually reply or say something. Like there's this one guy in particular on Instagram who really creeps me out because he's everything I post is like, wow, how you doing today, gorgeous? Yo. Wow, you look beautiful. Yeah, I had to block him because it was just so it was so weird and awkward. Plus, who does he think he's looking at? I think he I think he thinks I'm someone else. <laughs> we, we need to go to his house, take his glasses off, clean them, <laughs> give them back. Yeah, he needs to clean his glasses <laughs> for sure. Number six on her list: no more than one girl per scroll on your explore page. I know that your explore page is what you click on. And you want to know how I know? Because one time I asked a guy to stop and he did. And for the duration of our entire relationship, there was not one girl on his explore page. So I know that the rest of you guys are lying sacks of you know what. Mm, I don't know what none of that means. So. Oh, okay. So like, um, I'm not going to explain it to you. Yeah. Don't explain it to me. People know what I'm talking about. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, number seven, if she posts more than one bikini pic in a row, unfollow. <laughs> Can he follow Britney Spears? She's using the hand bra now. Can he follow her? I th- well, she's a celebrity. It's different. Because, uh, you know, the odds of him getting with a celebrity are don't exist. Like, Britney Spears is not going home with my boyfriend. Okay, so I can like Britney Spears' photo if All she's using a hand bra. Okay. Yeah, you know, I, I think I didn't, I didn't realize what an exhibitionist Britney Spears is. It kind of makes me like her even more. So that's this woman's dating request. I just, you know, I don't know. I feel like when it, once you start dating somebody and you have like a list of things that you want them to do or not do, I feel like that's a red flag. I don't care what's on that list. Even if on that list is like pizza every Friday night and, um, you know, walk my dog once a week. I don't care what's on the list. It's a red flag. You don't give somebody a list when you first start dating them. I'm sorry. Is she bringing the list to the to the first date? It's on her TikTok. It's uh, imagine, yeah, you meet her on on Tinder and you go s- stalk her a little on social media. You go to her TikTok and you're like, oh, it's this girl. Yeah, she better be really hot. She is, but she's bananas. That's what I mean. Like, doesn't matter how hot she is, she's going to be a nightmare. 
then we have to gauge the amount of bananas. Right. If she's only six <laughs> bananas, yeah. then that's worth it. If she's 12 bananas crazy, then mm. maybe not. I just wish her list was a little more diverse. You know, I wish it was like no ex-girlfriends and, um, you know, take me out to dinner twice a week. Mm -hmm. But it's all about other women on social media. It's all social media stuff. This is a girl who's been cheated on more than once. That's what it seems like. Yeah. Oh, shit. It's upgrade. It's the Cooper and Anthony show. I'm going to give you scenarios and you're going to tell me if you're going to let it go. Mm-hmm. Or you're going to ask to speak to the manager. Oh, I let nothing go. Go ahead. <laughs> you don't always have to bring the manager involved. Some things you can just let let it go. That's what the manager's there for. You're at a restaurant. Your server gets your order wrong. Mm-hmm. Even worse, it takes 20 minutes for them to return to the table to fix the issue. When the check comes, no discount given. Do you let it go or do you ask to speak to the manager? All right. So here's the thing. I am well aware. It's If I just order right off the menu, if I'm like, I'll have number seven and they bring number 12 and then they take forever to come back to bring the actual food after everybody else has eaten and they haven't done anything on the check, then yeah, that's not right. I mean, I've, I've worked in restaurants f- for my whole life, so I know what you do and what you don't do. But the problem is, I, you know, when, when I order, on, I'll have this without that. Can I have four of those and three of those, but none of these? Well, what, how about this? Instead of telling me what you don't want, just tell me what you do want. Mm, yeah. <laughs> okay. I only want this and that. Fine. So I know that my order is a lot because I have celiacs and I have a million eating disorder things and I have like a pain I'm in a the ass. FODMAP. I'm a, yeah, exactly. I'm a pain in the ass. So, Quite often, I expect my food to be wrong. I've gotten used to it. Or spit so on. If, <laughs> right, right. So if I have asked for a million different things and it comes wrong, that's that's on me. That's my fault. Mm-hmm. But if I just order number seven and you bring me number 12, sorry, that's on you. I'm calling the manager. And it takes 20 minutes for them to come back to the table. Yeah, that's a problem. Okay. You're trying to return something at a store. Uh-huh. The clerk informs you you're one day outside the return window. There's a 30-day return policy. Today is day 31. Do you let it go? Do you speak to the manager? Most stores don't honor those policies. That's just a policy in case they want to be an asshole about it. Okay, so they're being an asshole. Do you talk to the manager or do you let it go? How much is the item? <sighs> It doesn't matter no, with you. It could be 25 cents. No. Uh-uh. If I'm returning something that's like five bucks, screw it. I'm going to keep it. But if I'm returning something that was like $50 and I didn't open it or whatever, uh-uh. No. I'm uh, Sorry. You go to order the Cobb salad at a restaurant, mm-hmm. <laughs> but you want to su- substitute a different dressing, which is something you would do. The yeah. server explains that the restaurant has a policy against no substitutions. Do you let it go? Do you speak to a manager? Neither. I get up and I leave and I go somewhere else where I can order what I want to eat. Okay, so you know, right I, then you're I, like, listen, stop, I'm done. I'm out of here. I live in New York City. Restaurants here are really expensive. We went out the other night just for Thai food. I got like, I didn't even get anything. I just, I got rice and peanut sauce. That's all I got. And he got a pad, and he got a pan, pad Thai. That's all we had. One pad Thai and rice and peanut sauce. It was $38. I'm not joking. Wow. So, yeah. See? So, if I go somewhere and they won't substitute a dressing, I just won't eat there. Before driving to a store, you check the website to make sure that item is in stock. But when you get there, they're sold out. The salesperson just says, the website was wrong. What do you do? Do you let it go? Do you speak to a manager? That just happened to me. (laughs) So what did you do? So what did you do? Okay, so I was looking for, I just painted my kitchen. So I have all this paint left over. And um, the Home Depot guy was like, just get some mason jars and just, you know, put the paint in there real tight, put some plastic over it, and the paint will be fine to hang on to in case you need to do touch-ups. I'm like, great. So there's a store near me where they sell the right size mason jars for all the paint I have. 
and I went to the website and I saw that they had the size mason jars that I needed and I went to the store and the guy's like, yeah, they're not here. I'm like, but they were on your website. He's like, we might have just sold them today. Let me check in the back. He checked in the back. They weren't there. I was like, can I order off the website? He's like, no. No. So I left. <laughs> what, was I gonna, what, what can a manager do? Make something appear that's not there? Okay, so you would let it go. Yeah, of course I let it go. Okay. I can't do anything about that. You're at a bar. The bartender is very rude to you. He rolls his eyes and ignores you when you need something. He's generally a dick at all your interactions with him. Do you let it go? Or do you speak to a manager? No, the manager doesn't care. The manager knows that his bartender's an asshole, so that's not going to do anything. Mm-hmm. I leave the bar. I do not leave a tip. And I get on Yelp, and I let the world know. So you do something worse (laughs) than going to the manager. You tell everybody. Yeah, and you know, it's weird. When you put something on Yelp, a manager calls you. (laughs) 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 Happens a lot. You get emails from managers asking you, how come you... And they've said, how come you didn't talk to a manager? And I say, because if you have an employee that's that rude, you know they're that rude. You did nothing about it, so clearly you don't care. Mm Mm-hmm. So why would I go to you? What are you going to do? I guarantee this scenario has happened to you. You're going food shopping. You have five coupons for half off cereal. You try Mm -hmm. to use all five. They say there's only a limit of one per customer, but it doesn't say that anywhere on the coupon. Do you let it go? Do you speak to the manager? No, you can manage. You can't do anything about that. That's that's a rule. So you buy a box of cereal on Monday. You go back Tuesday, buy the second one. You go on Thursday, you buy another one. Hmm. So you kind of let yeah. it go. Yeah, you got to let it go. That's again. There's nothing they can do about that. That's their policy. If something is a policy, they're not going to change their policy for you. But the policy isn't on the piece of paper, though. That's the problem. It doesn't you know say. What? It doesn't matter because sometimes the policy of the store is different than the policy of. The company. We just, oh, this is so funny. So my boyfriend likes to take a little snack with him when he goes to the theater. He likes M&Ms. And um, he got some M&Ms and they were um, were the wrong ones in the bag or it was rancid or there's something wrong with the M&Ms. I forgot what it was. And he had, you know, things are expensive here in New York. He bought a big giant bag and it was $9. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, you just wasted $9. He threw it away. So I was like, you know what? Let me send an email to Mars, to the company that owns M&M's, and just let them know. (laughs) No, well, listen. I sent them the batch number. I said, there's something wrong with this batch number. Everything in here smells like wintergreen or mint or something, as if if it went through, like, a different line. Yeah. Yeah, different line. Something's wrong with this particular... Just letting them know. Like, hey, FYI... We had to throw these out. There's something wrong with this bag. Here's the SKU number, whatever. Bye. And I got an email back and they were like, how much did you spend? Where did you buy it? We'll send you coupons. And they sent us coupons. I was like, oh, that was very nice. So my boyfriend takes the coupon into CVS and they're like, we don't take these coupons. He's like, this is a manufacturer's coupon. Yeah, we don't take those here. (laughs) (laughs) But this is where I bought this product. Yeah, so we still have the coupons laying around. Never used them. Wow. All right, here's another one for you. You have a dinner reservation for eight mm-hmm. at eight o'clock. Eight o'clock? Eight, eight o'clock or eight people? Eight people at eight o'clock. Okay. You show up at the restaurant at eight o'clock. Your table isn't ready. You end up waiting 30 minutes before getting seated. Do you let it go? Bitch at the manager. Only 30 minutes? Yeah. This is New York. You're are you kidding? When you have an eight o'clock reservation with eight people, you're lucky if they take you within an hour. No, oh, okay. thirty minutes. I'd be like, that's a gift. This place is awesome. <laughs> Coming back. I'll be here every night. <laughs> <laughs> you're in line What's... at the store. Only one checkout lane is open. Oh, and the line is yeah. very long. Meanwhile, yep, yep, yep. you see other people that work there hanging out doing nothing. Do you let it go? Do you speak to a manager? The beauty of New York is that somebody on that line is going to complain. I try not to let it be me because I know that there'll be somebody else that'll be yelling, hey, hey, you over there. <laughs> hey, come on. Let's go. Hey, do you see this line here? That's Where's true. the manager? 
That's I'm telling. I live. I live in a city, especially this neighborhood. There's a lot of that. In fact, just today, I went for coffee with a friend of mine, and the coffee place we we go to. There's two people behind the counter. One takes your order, the other makes it. The one making it was on her phone, hanging out, doing nothing because it wasn't that busy. The one woman took my order. And I went over to where you, they give you the coffee and the woman, the other one was still on the phone, like, you know, on her phone. And then somebody else came and ordered coffee and she's still on her phone. And eventually she looked up and saw that there were orders coming in. <sighs> but I just, you know, I got on my phone. I texted some friends. I just wasted some time. I'm like, I'm not going to be like, hey, you, hey, come on, do your job. Make come my on, coffee. Come on, come on, come on. Hurry. She, she knows what she's there to do. She knows why she's she's hired. So I, I let it go, you know. Do you know what I mean like whatever? I'm, it's coffee. Last one. It's not, it's not. No one's dying. Last one. You watch your waiter cough into your pasta before delivering Uh-oh. it to your table. When you nope. point it out, he denies it and walks away. Nope, 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 nope. I'm giving that pasta back, and if he says no and won't take it off the menu, that gets a manager. See, I would think all of these. If I put you in every one of these scenarios, you're calling the manager. You know, the problem is the more managers you call, the less places you can go. <laughs> You're the person that emails Mars candy bars. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I was doing my I was doing my uh, civic duty. I wasn't trying to get something out of it. I was just saying to them, listen, you have a problem with this batch. I want to make sure that it's not poison. You're not killing people. There's no cyanide in here. Here's the batch. I know, but it's nine dollars worth of candy so you took out three hours of your life because not three a- hours it takes two seconds to send an email no hey, no no fyi three hours because you bitched about it for two and a half <laughs> <laughs> and and then you got it un- under your skin then you had to go to the internet and find the email to mars which took a half an hour and no it doesn't take a half you literally go there and as soon as you get up on the Mars site, it says customer service. You click on it, and they say customer service email. And then you just click on the email. It takes two seconds. And literally, like, I wasn't complaining. I was like, something's wrong with this batch. In case there's tampering going on or something nefarious, you need to know about it. Like, I, I, you know, in case you have an employee who's sabotaging your M&Ms. See, I throw it away. I don't worry about it. I don't. I'm a whistleblower. Th- think about it again. You took three hours of your life because you complained. It wasn't three hours. It took you me complained. Two seconds. Then you had to open up your your computer. And your computer wasn't charged, and then you had to go that's, plug no, it in. Tr- and then I opened the computer. I went to Mars.com or M&Ms.com or whatever. It pops right. It took two seconds. This conversation is taking longer. <laughs> I know. And this is nine dollars <laughs> worth of conversation right here. <laughs> it's making and me you know, upset. A lot good it did a lot good it did me. We were never able to use the coupon anyway. See? They won.